Okay. You can start. So basically, that's that's it up for this afternoon. So I made a few slides and I have a demo. And that's one part of what I did. I also have you know, a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to open PR, follow the relay, but I'm not going to talk about those in this little presentation. So the presentation goes like this. We start with FloodSub. We say that that's our initial PubSub implementation. It's the simplest possible protocol that can work for PubSub. And it has two basic characteristics. One, it relies on ambient query discovery. So that means we don't have an active protocol for discovering queries, but instead, whenever we connect to a query, we check to see whether it supports uh, FloodSub, and then we just added a new query. And in order to route messages, we just flood route the messages to all known peers. Okay, so it has some good characteristics. So it's straightforward implementation. It's relatively trivial to implement, and it's very robust. You know, you really can't do anything to break FlatSub, right? I mean, it will keep sending messages no matter what. And because it flat routes the messages, it is guaranteed to follow the minimum latency paths. So we're going to have the minimum latency in delivering the messages. The problem is that it doesn't only follow the minimum latency paths, it follows all paths. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very it's bandwidth inefficient. And the biggest problem with the, besides the bandwidth inefficiency, the global bandwidth inefficiency, is that it has unbounded degree flooding. So that means that if a peer is connected to many peers, then it's going to have a huge amplification factor. So if, if you have 100 connections to 100 parts of peers, then you're going to be sending 100 extra messages, which is a big problem, especially <laughs> for things like bootstrappers that we would like them to participate, you know, like in some PubSub channels or topics. So what do we do to control the flood? And this is the basis of GoSubSub. So we use a randomized mass construction that basically uh, starts with picking some random peers, and then we use self-stabilization uh, algorithm that tries to, to keep the, the number of peers that we have within some parameters. So there is a, a desired degree that this is how many peers we're going to pick, and there's a low and a high, which are relaxation factors, which allows the protocol to converge. Okay, so this gives us a parameter control of amplification factor. So basically, that's a selection of D. So if we have a degree of six, we're going to get about 6.4 you know, with the default parameters that we have. And we basically trade latency for bandwidth efficiency. So we no longer have unbounded, unbounded flooding. So we're very bounded. But that also means that we have some more latency in delivering the messages. So on top of that, we also have gossip propagation, which means that apart from sending the messages along, you know, like the, the links in the overlay, the edits in the overlay, we also have a randomized propagation of, uh, of messages that says, hey, this is how, these are the messages that I have already. And you know, this allows us to out of band request messages, and this allows us to jump hops opportunistically. That means that if you have, if we happen to have an overlay that has you know, long distance between you and there and you're directly connected, then we can jump hop through the through the, you know, the gossip. But also it allows us to repair overlay pathologies, let's say it's very unlikely, but it's possible to happen that we have an overlay that basically is split, then the randomized gossip propagation is gonna allow us to repair this pathology and turn it into a push wall. So basically we can request the message out of back. And the final part that the cost of propagation gives us is protocol accessibility. You should think of gossip sub as basically a very baseline protocol for PubSub. And we can add stuff with control messages that propagate with gossip. So we can add peer exchange, we can add epidemic broadcast optimizations to control messages. This is, you know, like this work. So demo. All right, I'm not exactly set up for this. Is it visible? Should I make it bigger? A little bit. Yeah, that's better. All right, so I was running it previously, so basically let me reset the random seed. I'm going to capture the random seed so that both all the propagations, all the simulations that I do to demonstrate uh, the two protocols basically use the same graph construction. Okay, so let's start with simple flat sub simulation. This is a flat sub simulation that has 100 nodes with uh, 10 connections each, random connections, and sends a single message. Okay, so this is going to generate a bunch of stuff. This pub sub connect stuff that we see is basically constructing the, the connections in the vertical level. Again, this is the publication, and then the simulator waits a little while for, uh, for staff to, to quiet down, and then it prints you a summary that says, hey, we have 100 nodes, we send uh, one message, 
and we deliver to convert and or and we send 17 convert published messages. So we can have an amplification factor of 17x. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with gossip sub. And just keep in mind that sending a single message is really the worst case scenario for gossip sub because you know, it needs to construct an overlay and then it's gonna send some gossip you know, that's gonna trail the message propagation for about three seconds. Okay, so we saw the transmission go by really, really fast, and then now we send you know a bunch of gossip, and that's the simulation summary. Let me, I'm going to run the subsequent simulations without printing out of the trace live. Okay, so what happened here is that we only published 638 messages compared to 1700. You know, like for plaza. Could, could you open up a small window and like push the text around a bit? What is going What? We can't see anything. Up, or can't see oh, what button. happened there? It's the screen. You could open a small window and like split it. Somewhere. We make your window just a little bit smaller and smaller. Yeah, like, over here. You can. <laughs> you can. But you can open up a second window there and like move it in. Uh, or you can tap. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. Oops. Okay, so what happened is that we have an amplification factor of 6.4 here, this is like only 638 messages, but we also have you know, the cost of overlay construction, this took 376 messages, and you know, it's also the cost of propagation. So for a single message with 10 connections, they end up using the same bandwidth effect, more or less. But let's, inc let's increase the number of connections, okay? So instead of running it with, uh, with just 10 connections, I'm going to run it with 20 connections and I'm going to suppress the output from the simulator by passing this trace void uh, parameter that's, that's only going to show us the summary after the simulation runs. I'm going to do the same thing with gossip time again. So just notice that the amplification factor jumped from 17 to 35 approximately, because we have a lot more connections we're sending over, mm -hmm. okay? And if we do the same with gossip sub again with 20 connections, we're gonna notice that there was no jam in the amplification factor. The amplification factor remained constant, about the same as before, okay? And the interesting part is that we still have a little bit of gossip that we're sending, but even with the gossip that we're sending, and you know, like with, with all the overlay construction cost, we still end up being much more efficient than uh, than gossip than PubSub. So here is the amplification factor of 6.2 plus we have you know, like a 14x for uh, sorry 1.4x for the gossip. So I'm going to animate now. I'm going to animate the two simulations so you get a better idea of what exactly is happening. Okay, and that's the flat side. Anyway, so you can see the flood as the network is happening, but it's also very fast. Okay, that's uh, that's the advantage of flood sub. So if we look at the same simulation with gossip sub, you see that there is no flood. The messages are flowing much more regularly, and you're gonna see, you know, like some little orange stuff popping up. These are gossip messages, and here we see the tail of the simulation after we send the message. We we keep sending gossip around for, for another three seconds. So you should keep in mind that the simulation is basically 10x expansion on time. So 10 milliseconds get display in a frame every 10 milliseconds. So you know, this takes a lot, mm -hmm. a lot less, you know, like in real time, but we see the gossip propagating around. Now we can do an interesting exercise. And we see that the publish delay for flood sub goes about 100 milliseconds. But uh, for gossip sub, it was 300 milliseconds. So that's the advantage of flood sub. But to make things more interesting, I'm going to increase the number of messages that I'm sending so that we're not in the worst case scenario for, uh, for gossip sub, but uh, we we'll also have something more realistic. So let's send 10 messages at 5 messages per second. Okay, the simulation is going to run for, uh, for a few seconds here. So 
way. The simulator is running in real time, so we're using, you know, I, I'm not using that piece of time, but actually in real time, you know, scheduled by, by the protocol. So we say again, now we, we published 10 messages, we delivered 1,000 because that's, we have 100 nodes, and with, in total we had an amplification factor of 34x because we sent 35,000 messages. So if we do the same, the same thing with Gossip Sub, you will notice now that uh, the cost of the gossip has been amortized because we're sending way more messages than gossip, and the gossip doesn't change the amount of gossip that we're sending. And that the amplification factor basically has remained pretty much the same. So here we see that our amplification factor is 6.4 approximately, okay? And this is the gossip that we sent, and it's 2.2 now in terms of amplification factor, and it has been amortized. Now, the, the animation is a lot more interesting here with many messages and should pass the message around that flood sub is really creating a huge flood. And you can see that as it's happening, because you know, if our entire network is red, it means our all links are active because it's sending too much stuff. It really breaks the network. That's the problem with, <laughs> with flood sub. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. The rest is not so interesting <laughs> because it continues the same pattern. But if you look at the gossip sub animation, you'll see that this is constant to what was happening before, so it's a lot more efficient. And we can also calculate the delays that we had in the propagation. And we'll see that Gossip uh, floods up took two seconds to deliver all our messages. Well, gossip uh, took 2.08. So if we start sending more messages, the uh, latency advantage for uh, for floods up pretty much disappears. Okay, and that's about it for for the demo. Okay. <laughs> right, next.